All right, guys, so I get this question so many times and I want to address it today. Um, if we could start our childcare business all over again, what are three things that I would have done differently um, the next time around? So dive into this video because I've made so many mistakes um, as a young entrepreneur, as a young childcare owner, and really just as a young leader, um, you know, really not knowing the things that I know now. Um, and so reflecting upon it, if I had to open up another childcare business all over again, these are the things that I would change and or do differently. So one of the first things, um, I'm gonna just get right into it, that I would say, if I had to do it all over again, um, one of the first things that I think I would really say is that I would do my due diligence on understanding and familiarizing myself on, um, I would really say policies and procedures, okay? Um, when I say policies and procedures, I say that because I became a childcare entrepreneur at the early age of 20, okay? And your girl is now 32. And so I've learned so many things along the way, but I know that in my early 20s, I didn't care about policies and procedures, right? Like, I didn't really believe that they mattered. I didn't really believe, um, you know, that they were enforced. I just kind of made up things as I wanted going along. I kind of made up things and made decisions based upon how I felt, made decisions upon based upon those families, made decisions based upon staff. I wasn't really, really following the policies and procedures, or I didn't really think about, honestly, my policies and procedures. I had these family handbooks. I had this, you know, employee handbook that I might have got from Google or a girlfriend, and I really never took the time to see, is this good for our business? Is this good for me as a director at this site? And so I would really say familiarizing myself with policies and procedures, updating my policies and procedures, and educating my staff and my family on policies and procedures because I really didn't educate my staff. You know, it was, this is the handbook, here it is, read it, let me get you signed in, and let's go, let's get started. And I made so many mistakes in that because a lot of the things that I had to correct or readjust or any of that great good stuff, what happened? They didn't know, they didn't read it, they just were signing it to get started and that was it, right? So I would say I would really um, do again my policies and procedures and really understanding and being comfortable with really, um, what's the word? not implementing them but really being comfortable with really enforcing them i was so so scared to write anybody up i was super scared to give somebody a day off i was super scared to send staff home that wasn't in correct uniform i was really scared to not necessarily be a boss but really be a leader and you know walk in my due diligence because really i didn't believe that i was a leader right so i think that will be one of the biggest things as i would say is my policies and procedures okay i think another thing that i could say um if I had to do it all over again, transitioning, um, you know, into a new childcare as a director and, and an owner, I think what the first thing would be looked apart, right? Um, and I think that's one of the biggest things that I can say that I've learned along the way, um, not just as an owner in a childcare program, but just an owner in any business overall. Um, I really was, you know, really, really rolling out of bed. So imagine me, 21 years old owning this building with my mom, but I'm in charge of this whole building. I'm in charge of staff, I'm in charge of children. I got this money, I got this budget, and this is what it is, right? And then I knew how to teach children because that's what I went to get my bachelor's degree in, but I didn't know how to lead people. I didn't know what a, what a great leader was. And more importantly, I definitely wasn't looking the part. I remember specifically an inspector came in asking to speak to the person in charge. And why? Because I didn't look like the person in charge. And I don't mean look like the person in charge for the simple fact that you know you think you have to go out and you know buy all these fancy clothes no but take pride in yourself right make sure that you look like a leader make sure that you're dressing yourself up every day even if you don't feel like it you still have to look the part because if you're being treated like a babysitter and you're being treated and walked all over it's because but simply you're not demanding respect but you're not demanding respect because you don't look that part so i would say that's one of the biggest things i learned early on is yes it's okay to have a dress down day yes it's okay to you know maybe wear jeans or you know not be in that space but at least three out of four days you should be coming and looking like a leader so 
whether you go to your basic Ross or Marshalls or whatever and get yourself five nice shirts or, you know, five dress shirts and five khaki pants, but you got to look like the part in that space. Why? Because you're also setting the temperament for your teachers and you're setting the temperament for your staff and your families and your parents and how they're going to treat you. So I will always say if you want respect, you have to make sure you demand respect, but you also have to look the part. Okay. Um, another thing that I would definitely do all over again is maybe instead of waiting until I was like... I think maybe like we'll be in 12 years. So maybe like nine years in or eight years in, we finally hired a mentor. Um, you know, when we finally hired um, someone that can really actually help us scale our program. And we hire multiple mentors and multiple people. But I guess I would say I would hire a mentor. I would educate my mind. I would purchase a course. Um, back in the day when I was like that young, um, this is almost like 12, 13 years ago. Courses, Instagram, social media, all of those things was not even like a real factor. So the way I'm getting on here, giving y'all the gems in the game on YouTube, yes, YouTube has, I would imagine, have been around, but it was nowhere near to the capacity that I could just get on YouTube and ask questions, or I could just go on Instagram and ask, or there was millions of coaches in all the same industry that I'm in. So I would definitely say I would have hired a mentor and um, a coach sooner so that I can learn some of the basic things that I need on being a leader. I can learn some of the basic things I need on being organized. I can learn some of the basic things on how to actually enforce those policies and procedures with my staff because really that's what a mentor and that's what a coach is. So I always tell my clients um, and whether it's in our group coaching program or whether I'm working with clients one on one, ultimately at the end of the day, as a mentee or as someone that needs guidance, we have to A, be willing to receive, but more importantly, I'm pouring all of my mistakes, all of the things that I've learned, if they call me or they send me a message or something in our one-on-one -on -one group coaching or in our private group coaching, they're giving me a scenario. And obviously, if they don't have that coach or mentor to give them all the ways that scenario can go left, they're going to go with their thought in mind. And they're only going to go with their thought in mind because they don't know the possibilities on how that scenario dealing with that parent can go left very fast, right? So I would just say hire a mentor, hire a coach. If you can't afford to hire a mentor or hire a coach, make sure that you're educating your mind in the space of podcasts, YouTubes, books, um, you know, all of those great good things. Um, my next, and this is my biggest, biggest, biggest one, guys. I really feel as though this is how I've grown as a leader and grown as a coach and grown as an entrepreneur is I really familiarize myself with business and finance practices okay i'm gonna say that loud and i'm gonna say it again i familiarize myself with business and finance practices as a entrepreneur okay you cannot run from business and finance why because it's the heartbeat of our business and for so long I was like, oh, I got an accountant. Oh, I don't need I, knew, I don't need to know this because I could just ask my accountant. No, the more that I started becoming a six-figure childcare owner and the more that we started securing more six-figure grants and things of that nature, you better know how you spend the money. You better know how you're keeping the money. You better know how to run your own profit and loss statements. You better know what a balance sheet is. You better understand lines of credit and interest and all of that great good stuff. So I would definitely say... Um, if I could do it all over again, I would take some more business and finance courses earlier on. Um, I, as a as a child care owner, I went to college to get my bachelor's degree in um, early child education. And then I went back and got my master's degree in educational leadership. But guess what? The money and the practices and what you need to know and 1099s and contractors and contracts and projected budgets, and forecasted budgets, all of that stuff that makes up healthy practices as a healthy business, whether you're a small, mid-sized, or large-based childcare provider, you need to know. Why? Because now I know how to negotiate contracts, right? Now I know how to negotiate leases. Now I know what's supposed to be in a lease, right? These are all things that you want to familiarize yourself with. So if I could do it all over again, I don't think it would have been to be like understanding more, you know, how to be a better teacher. I think it would have been more on how to be a better CEO and how to be a better leader and how to be a better, um, you know, an, an owner in the space of tax breaks and the owner in the space of um, 401ks and business plans and all of those things. I didn't know those things because I just felt like, oh, my daycare is here, it's making money and this is good enough. But that's not good enough if you want to actually scale. You have to learn some things because the more that you know, the more that you grow. And last but not least, I guess I would say one of the things I would do over would be my leadership um, skills and my leadership set. And that's really understanding the team. Okay, your business cannot run and operate without a team. And in that space of building a team, people think like when they say team, you got to have this large 
crazy, um, you know, people of 10 or 12 or 13 team leaders. No, your team could be three. Your team could be five. Your team may be 15 and or 20, but if you have never managed people before, you are going to be in for a rude awakening um, when you get larger sites or you go from being a family-based child provider to now you're a center-based and now you got to manage people, right? It, it's a mechanism to managing people. It's a psychology understanding to managing people. And it's also you as a leader to understand how people learn, right? To understand how do I treat myself well, right? To understand how can I shower them with love and gifts if it's not all monetary? Because the paycheck is one thing. Early child education is always, for the most part, we've always been in underpaying like you know we always give more love and we give more labor and we always go out our way for parents and families but you want to make sure that you understand how to lead a team you understand how to reprimand a team member in a positive professional way you want to make sure that you understand how to take yourself out the equation always as being counted in your count and your ratio and allow people to you know bring their sets of skills so i come from the space of constantly being like you know a micromanager like no it got to be done this way this is the way this is the only way that it can be done and that's not always true Right. So as a leader, I guess I would say I would have went back to take more classes and listen to more podcasts and learn more YouTubes and get more coaches and mentors on how to be a better leader. Because ultimately, at the end of the day, you cannot operate a business without a steady, you know, and, and fulfilled team that is, you know, ultimately. And you, you want to find better ways to do that. Um, so that is my reflection on now growing in the space of being a multi-site child care owner. Um, I teach all of these great good things in our group coaching program, but I really love to teach them in a one-on-one -on -one space. So if you are looking for a child care coach and or a mentor or someone in that space to give you some guidance, you can always book a regular two-hour mastermind call with me. I will leave my link down in the description below. But guys, make sure that you are doing your due diligence on being a great leader. You are understanding, educating your mind on business and finance. And more importantly, you are implementing and you are actually enforcing those policies and procedures after you make them your own, okay? Because that is one of the best ways to grow as a leader in this ECE field. So if you like this video and more where they came from, please make sure that you like, comment, and leave me some comments down below. And what is it that you've learned over the past couple years on being a child care owner or director? Or what are some things that you're fearful of and becoming that new CEO um, in your business because it, it's actually it's it's a lifestyle. You know, you begin to develop your 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 world is based upon and around what's going on in your center. And so you can't allow your center to overtake your world. You have to find a medium balance and you have to find, I would guess I would say, like your, you know, your flow and your confidence as that leader. Because if you don't have confidence and you don't believe that you deserve this position or and or you don't believe because this could someone could be watching this video and be a director. You know, it really starts first I always tell my directors it starts with your confidence you got to believe in yourself that you are worthy and you have to believe in yourself that you can make what it is your dreams a reality um in this space as being the best child care owner and best child care ceo and the director that you possibly can okay so make sure that you leave me some comments if you like this video and more where they came from drop them down below and make sure you turn on that subscribe button so you know every time i drop a video till next time